dear students i am professor mansi patel from jk shah classes and i am here with your very favorite chapter interpretation of statutes now you will be like ma'am you are also teasing us it's our favorite chapter really actually na bachcha interpretation of statutes it's very simple when it comes to understanding but of course it is little difficult when it comes to writing because you know exactly what is literal construction reasonable proviso saving clause etc you know all of this but just the problem which you face is the writing so but you have one tip for you please try to put as many latin terms as possible and legal terms possible so instead of writing statute you can use the term written will of legislature something like that but this you will be able to do bachcha only if you read it more and more times and you do the ample amount of writing practice see interpretation of statutes now there are hot favorite questions of institute like for example hayden's rule proviso preamble then i can say saving clause explanation they ask keep on asking you loads and loads of questions on this so if you see in our textbook also we have given the exercise the questions if you see there are some questions which keep on coming if not all at least try to practice them bachcha like for example write what is proviso now you know what is proviso in your heart you will be able to explain your friend but when it comes to writing for 2 marks 3 marks 4 marks you get confused so the only solution is the writing practice okay i know latin terms are little irritating for you to just remember and write but try to remember them as harry potter spells you will definitely remember as in we don't have a choice we have to find some way or the other to remember them in fact in ca foundation also bachcha you had done nemo that cod non habit first time when you read it you found it very unusual you found it very weird ki what this is but over a period of time you got used to it you had ubram e fadi again you got used to it same case here also you will be getting used to it but just do not start this with a negative note 100% you will be able to do it just do writing practice of at least 4 to 5 question okay so now interpretation of statute how important this chapter is the weightage is around 7 to 8 marks or maybe little more now if you see the past analysis of the papers where the mcqs have started they have asked questions of approximately 6 to 7 marks and maybe 2 3 marks mcqs but it's a small chapter which is getting you at least 8 to 9 marks it is good it is totally 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 worth it you might love indian contract act but it's big you might love your companies act but definitely it's big but interpretation of statutes general clauses act they are small but still they will be getting you good marks and you know the importance of one mark bachas right yes so with this note with a positive note let us start off with your interpretation of statutes what do you mean by the term interpretation understanding what do you mean by the term statute law so we are going to study how to understand the law now why this particular chapter they have introduced in your curriculum or why it is important in practical life bachcha in our country law is made by someone else executed by someone else and it is read and decision is given by someone else so it is the parliament who makes the laws so they are known as legislative authority it is the government which executes those laws they are having executive authority and it is the court who is going to listen to the parties and give the final judgment so it is the court who is going to read the law and then say you are right or you are right and accordingly give the judgment so if you see bachcha law is made by parliament but it is actually read by the court and the judgment is given by the court now it is very very possible there might be some misunderstandings between both but we live in the same house husband wife mother and child then brother and sisters grandparents we live in the same house we know each other from all these years we are so close 
but still misunderstandings can definitely happen between us. So these people are strangers. Parliament and court, the judge does not know who has made the law and the lawmaker does not know who is going to actually read and execute and then finally give the judgments. So definitely there can be, there can be misunderstandings. So we are here, this will stop you from misunderstanding any law. See what happens is, there can be some laws which are very outdated. Like for example, Indian Contract Act is very very outdated and it's been a long time since they have amended it. So in practical life, do we follow the old laws or do we update it or do we assume something else and then apply it or what is to be done? Or there can be many drafting errors that poor fellow the draftsman, instead of writing shall he wrote may, instead of writing may he wrote shall. So your interpretation will accordingly change. So, in this particular chapter, we are going to study the rules of interpretation where they will give you standard rules. Okay, for reading this law, you are supposed to apply these rules, full stop. See, just as in accounting standards, you have accounting standards which are like standards. You have to follow this only for accounting. Similarly, you have standards on auditing. You have to follow this only for auditing. Now these you can call them as standards of law. That means you are going to follow this for reading and applying the law. Yeah. So interpretation of statutes. Let's see. Yes. Meaning of statute. It is written will of legislature. But, but we Indians are very simple people. We use the term law. In fact in our constitution also we use the term law. We don't use the term statute. But those Britishers, they use the word statute, whatever. So here they have given you interpretation of statutes. Simple words, written will of legislature. Legislature means parliament, parliament writes this, parliament writes this. Therefore, it is written will of legislature. Okay, then what is interpretation? As I told you, understanding the law. Interpretation is understanding the law. And why is the interpretation so important? The words are confusing. The environment has changed but the law has sadly not changed. Then the words are complex. The laws are complex. Ask us about it. We know how complex laws are. And sometimes you know the parliament does not cover a particular area. They forget or maybe it is missed out. Whatever it is. Or drafting errors as I told you shall may. Or in case incomplete rules are there. So in this particular case, if the rules are incomplete, you will be applying the rules of interpretation to understand those incomplete acts or rules. Yeah. All this is fine. Document we shall see after we are done with the rules and all, after the whole chapter gets over. Let's talk about the rules of interpretation. But there are two rules. First you have primary and then secondary. Primary you have to apply first. If you are not getting proper conclusion, you can apply secondary. First one, literal construction. Literal construction means reading it as it is. We use the term literally it has happened. Literally. Literally means literal as in exactly whatever has happened, you narrated it. So literal construction means reading it as it is, understanding it as it is, applying grammar, applying technical rules or technical meanings or trade meanings, grammar rules and then interpreting it. This is nothing but literal construction. Now what exactly is this literal construction? If I take an example, I have actually downloaded Companies Act, Bear Act, Indian Contract Act bear at so that you understand how do we apply these rules. Okay, so see in your Indian Contract Act, I'm sure you remember there's section 26 agreement and restraint of marriage is void. So if you read it, every agreement and restraint of marriage of any person other than minor is void. What did you understand? That you cannot stop anyone from getting married. But of course you can stop minors from getting married. So, but here you applied grammar, normal English grammar rules. Then agreement. Agreement means you will not take dictionary meaning. 
agreement means whatever is given in indian contract act that means you gave the technical meaning restraint means stopping dictionary meaning marriage is your normal meaning getting married again minor normal meaning void you gave technical meaning that is not enforceable by law right so bachcha you read it as it is you understood it as it is and you applied it as it is this is literal construction so literal construction means you are giving grammar meaning ordinary meaning technical meaning trade meaning and so on now there is one latin term for this absoluta sententia expositio non indicate yes it simply means it simply means give simple meaning now it's quite an irony see i'm telling you in very simple way i'm not telling you exact word meaning of absoluta sententia simple words it means give simple meaning read it as it is interpret it as it is but bachcha sometimes no literal construction does not work because when you try to read something literally some absurd meaning comes so you have to reasonably interpret it give logic apply logic and then accordingly draw conclusion if i take an example in indian contract act you have a term surety steps into the shoes of creditor which are here if you go literally it means he will go into the shoes which is highly weird and stupid so which are here literal construction won't work you will be applying reasonable construction so reasonable construction you will apply when the literal construction has failed when you see the words yes prima facie it appears to be clear prima facie means first impression but on a close scrutiny you come to know that there is something wrong so when narrow interpretation fails to achieve the purpose you will be applying reasonable construction and give the sensible meaning example another example let's say i'm very upset i'm almost on the verge of crying if my best friend comes to me and asks me what happened to you mansi are you okay i tell her i'm fine just go if she takes it literally bachcha she will go but what did she do she sat next to me and she asked me what happened mansi who told you what tell me what is wrong with you so now i start crying i am howling i am irritated and then i narrate everything to her that means bachcha here she did not apply literal construction she applied common sense she sat next to me and asked me further so this is reasonable construction yeah then you have hayden's rule important from exam point of view hayden's rule or mischief rule or beneficial construction which i what does this mean see i'll tell you in india there are so many superstitions like other day someone told me that you cannot sweep floors in the night so if you sweep floors in the light money will also go out i'm like really does that mean tata zambani is birlas they don't sweep their floors in the night they to have loads of money so if i sweep the money will go see in this case bachcha why this rule was made this rule that you should not be sweeping floors in the night was made somewhere in 1500s or even earlier than that see because what used to happen at that time there was no electricity and very less people could afford those fire lanterns right so if a poor person who does not have a lantern if he is sweeping floor in the night in the dark so if there is any coin or earring or no spin if that is there that will also go out therefore they made this rule but now this rule has no relevance because now we have ample amount of light everyone has electricity you have tube lights so this rule doesn't make sense but it definitely made sense at that time another example this is the way common in indian household specifically that you must have heard that people saying that you should not give scissors or knife to another person directly in his hand otherwise you both will start fighting so does that mean i am not supposed to give it to my husband anyways we both fight what's the big deal so me not giving him scissor or not giving him knife that does not mean we both are going to stop fighting 
So in that particular case, bacha, why this rule was made? Because if you give the knife in the person's hand, he might get hurt. So it is always preferable to keep the knife or the scissors down and he will take it as per his convenience. That means in this particular case, bacha, yes, this rule still has some relevance. Of course, the reason is quite weird or the consequences are quite weird that you will start fighting. But this is the actual reason which is right now also existent. Therefore, this rule has some kind of relevance. So, bacha, what Hayden's rule says? Hayden's rule is telling you when you feel some particular rule is very weird. You just see when this rule was made, why the rule was made, what happened before and they want to stop what and they made this rule etc etc. So, you have to consider all of this. Another example, bacha, we have multiple meanings of the same word. Now, in India, Xerox means photocopies but actually Xerox is the name of a company. So now if some poor draftsman he just wrote in law obtain Xerox copies. So literally it would mean obtain company copies. So a mischief is getting created. A weird or absurdity is getting created. So they are saying suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. That means you remove this mischief and you give the appropriate solution. So, how will you remove the mischief? Simple. But here the word Xerox will not be treated as a company. Here the word Xerox will be treated as photocopies. So, you have applied Hayden's rule. So, Hayden's rule is to be applied when the words are confusing and capable of more than one meanings. Literal interpretation defeats the object. So, you give the extended meaning to it. And you consider four things while applying this rule. And these four things are very important from exam point of view. So first, what was the law before? What is the mischief which that law did not provide or they just missed it? Or what is the remedy that is the solution which the law has provided? What is the reason for this solution, etc, etc. So you see this background and accordingly you apply it. So suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. So this was your Hayden's rule or mischief rule. Now, harmonious construction, bacha. Harmony means peace. You follow your way, I will follow my way. Do not interfere in my life, I will not interfere in your life. Okay, let us live peacefully here, harmoniously. So, here harmonious construction means peace. So, what happens is sometimes, you know, multiple laws are applied. So, you have to first avoid any clash and give effect to all. But sometimes if you are unable to give effect, you have to follow that law which is more specific or that law which has come later in time. For example, HDFC is a bank. So it has Banking Regulation Act applicable, Companies Act applicable, plus if it's listed then SEBI. So multiple laws are applicable. First you have to give respect to all laws. No law is superior to other law. So all laws are same. So, you have to give respect to all and avoid any clashes, give effect to all. But due to some reason, let's say if there is some contradiction between two laws, then you follow that law which is more specific. So, in HDFC Bank, if there is a contradiction between Banking Regulation Act and Companies Act, you will be following Banking Regulation Act which is more specific. But let's say not every time now you will have specific laws. Then, bacha, you will be following that law which has come later in time. Now, what is this later in time? For example, you have studied Indian Contract Act 1872 wagering. Yeah, so lotteries is wagering and hence void. That's what you have studied. But Income Tax Act 1961 says lotteries are taxable at a flat rate of 30% and they are obviously valid. So, here, bacha, 1872 act says it's void, 1961 act says it's valid. So in practical life, bacha, we give preference to Income Tax Act 1961 because it has come later in time. So why do we take later in time? Because that's more updated. Exceptional construction is very simple and means both or means either of them. 
normally may when I use the term you may do this means it's optional that means it will have a directory force but there will be some cases where may will be treated as shall that means it will have a mandatory force and here the shall or must words will mean mandatory you shall do this you must do this it is compulsory but sometimes even shall or must will have a optional force that is directory so how will you judge whether it is mandatory or directory i'll tell you example you are using lot of uh, negative words no person will do this no person shall do this then it it is appearing that it is mandatory or if you don't do this you will have to pay penalty then it is obviously mandatory or you are suppressing the mischief or suppressing some fraud so you have made some law to stop mischief or stop fraud then it is definitely gonna be mandatory then bacha if it is coupled with duty means if it's your duty na bacha you have to do this there is no choice it's your duty to do this so it is mandatory but where which a public policy is not involved or public is not involved it's not against the public it's just a procedure then it's optional that means it's gonna be directory see section 3 of companies act says company may be formed for lawful purpose you don't have a choice you have to form the company for lawful purpose only so here the may word will be treated as shall and so on so these five points also they have asked in exam to important from exam point of view. So that was your exceptional construction. Ejus dem generis is very very simple. It means of the same class or species. So milk, ghee, paneer etc. What will be included in etc? Land building? No. Etc. will include the milk products or the dairy products. Right? So in this case that is ejus dem generis. But there should be multiple words. That means you can't just write milk, comma, etc. So the person will not come to know what will come in etc. So there should be multiple words. The words should be of the same class. You can't write milk, comma, lion, comma, rose, comma, land, comma, mines, etc. What are you trying to say, boss? So it should be of the same class or same species. And it should not exhaust the whole category. You wrote everything and then you wrote etc. It doesn't make any sense. So, edges dem generis means etc. Okay. Now, coming to secondary rules. Express genuineness test exclusio alterius. Express mention of one thing while silently excluding other things. Now, those who did not understand. Suppose if I say, I am assuming there is a physical face to face class here. And if I say A class. Everyone looks at me terrified. They are like, what happened to her now? Then I say, last bench. They all are like, okay, we are saved. Black t-shirt, last bench. The moment I say black t-shirt, bacha, I have silently excluded others. So, expressing one while silently excluding others. Okay. So, if I tell my aunt that I am coming to your house with my husband, me and my husband are coming full stop it's so easy yes it implies that other family members are not coming my son is not coming my mom is not coming my mother-in-law is not coming and so on so in this particular case express mention of one thing while silently excluding others simple nocitere sources means associated words the word plant means trees the word plant also means machine so in this case, bacha, in some law, if I write plant and trees, here the word plant will mean trees. In some law, if I write plant and machinery, here the word plant will mean machine. So what is the meaning of the word plant? It depends on it associated word. Associated word means it depends on the next word. So nocitary resources means associated words. And effect of usage, again important from exam point of view. So, bacha, what is this effect of usage? They have given you two Latin terms. Optima legem enterprise as constitute. Contemporanea expositio as to optima et forcene in lege. No, no, I am not cursing you. Don't worry, don't worry. So, what is this? See, first of all, they are telling you very simple thing. Custom is the best interpreter of law. You find some rules which are very old or redundant. 
Some rules are very, very old and they are very redundant. But still, they have not amended it. So you just see what people do in practical life and accordingly you interpret the law. For example, in your Indian Contract Act, they have given you communication of offer, communication of acceptance. They were still talking about post and telegram and whatnot. That is very old. Who communicates these days via post and telegram? We communicate through telegram app maybe, but definitely not that old telegram which we had, right? So this is a very old law and they have not amended it. So in practical life, Bacha, you will have to see what people do. For example, nowadays, social media is a new thing as in you can start opening your businesses on social media. There are so many people who have opened their own pages on Instagram. Home bakers are there, then jewelry or boutique, etc, etc. They make those reels, etc to get popular. So if I like a particular page and if I want to place an order, I will DM that person that is direct message that person on the Instagram and there I will ask is this available, what is the price, do you deliver here etc etc. He says yes it is available, this is for so and so price and this is available and we deliver it at your pin code also. I said fine then I want to place an order. That means if you notice Bacha, I gave an offer on Instagram, he accepted it on Instagram and we made a contract on Instagram. Now obviously all this is not covered in Indian Contract Act, no? So you will have to see some rules which are old. You have to see what people do in practical life. They follow emails, faxes, Instagram, other social media, Facebook, your Facebook market etc. So you have to see what people do. And contemporaneous expose issue, they are just saying one thing, expose the old laws to new circumstances and technology. Again, Indian Contract Act does not cover electronic contracts, e-contracts. But ma'am, we studied it in CA Foundation. But uh, that you had in your syllabus, but that is not actually there in the act. So in this particular case, electronic contracts are not covered in Indian Contract Act. That does not mean they are void. They are perfectly valid. So you will expose the old laws to new circumstances and technology. See, eventually conclusion, these two, the effect is same. That see what people do in practical life. But the terminology has changed. So I explained you both. These were all your secondary rules. Now coming to your internal aids. First one is very simple, the title of the chapter. Preamble. It tells you the scope and object of the act that this is what we are going to do and this is the reason why we have made the law. Negotiable Instruments Act has been made to cover rules on three negotiable instruments, promissory note, bill of exchange and check. So if you get confused in the law, obviously you will apply the preamble. Then headings and title of each chapter, which have, we use the term chapter in law, but in uh, syllabus we use the term unit. Now, Companies Act has 29 chapters, you had studied sale of goods, some few chapters, etc. So, if your the chapter's name is performance of contract, so if you get confused in the chapter, that is unit, you will see, oh, it's performance, so this can be interpreted in this way. So, that is headings and title will also help you in interpreting the law. So, aids of interpretation, which are aids means help. Internal means you will find this within the law and here external means you will find it outside the law, right? So I told you title, preamble, headings and then coming to marginal notes. Marginal notes, so Bachar, in your textbook, you have written this in the textbook and left hand side, you know, I in the class, I tell you to write this, this, this. So this is a marginal note. So basically marginal note is simple interpretation of what you read here. It's basically summarizing the law, right? So it helps you to understand this in a better way. Same thing even parliamenters when they make laws they do make some marginal notes. They summarize the effect of the section. So marginal notes also can be referred to interpret the law. But Bacha in headings and marginal notes both there is a Controversy. Some courts say that it should be considered. 
some courts say that it should not be considered for interpretation. Yes, so ma'am, what are we supposed to do? To be honest, write both. Theory question, you have to write both. Then next, definitional clauses, two main types of definitions. As everyone knows, section 2 is definitions or maybe some act section 3 is definition. For example, in general clauses, act section 3 is the definition. So anything. So, bacha, definitions, there are of two types. First, you have exhaustive and second, you have inclusive. So, this means this, it's exhaustive. Company means a company incorporated under Companies Act 2013 or any other previous Companies Act. So, this means this, full stop, it has exhausted the category. It is known as exhaustive definition. But debenture includes debenture stock, bonds or any other thing evidencing a debt whether constituting a charge or not. So what did I say? Debenture includes this, this, this. It is an inclusive definition. Just tell me bacha, whether it is inclusive or exhaustive. Okay, example. You have done the definition of share in Companies Act. Share means a share of share capital of the company and it includes a stock. So, this means and includes. So, the both words are there. Means and includes. So, bacha, which type of definition is it? Exhaustive. They have clarified here. Exhaustive, it will mean something or mean and include something. Inclusive, include something. Deems to include, apply and include. If you see these words, it is an inclusive definition. Illustrations, they are examples. So, if you see... They also know that it is very, very difficult. It's confusing. So, they give you examples. See? Illustrations. So, illustrations help you to interpret the law. Yes. Very important from exam point of view, proviso. Students mix up proviso, saving clause and exceptions. So, what is proviso? Some students tell me, ma'am, proviso is provision. Okay, does that mean ION is gone? They forgot. But your proviso means it is qualifying something. You say now so and so, so and so, so and so provided this. So that provided which you write is known as a proviso. Provided. In our language, but we write however. But they write in law provided. So I'll tell you, I'll show you the proviso. See, this is Companies Act, Bear Act. You will find this definition small company. 2 clause 85, right? Small company means so and so, so and so, so and so. And see, they have given you provided. Nothing will apply to this. So, by writing this, they have put a condition that this is not going to apply. This is not going to apply to these companies. So, proviso does the work of putting a condition. See here also subsidiary company provided so and so. So wherever you write provided it is always going to be condition. So normal function of proviso is to accept something or to qualify something. That is put a condition. So what is the difference between an exception and a proviso? Which are exception is for the whole section. I will show you. Indian contract act they will write exception. See exception. If you remember you had done agreements and restraint of legal proceeding is void. Exception 1 this, exception 2 this. This is not your notes, huh, but this is the bare act which I have downloaded. You will find it anywhere. So exception is for the whole section, proviso is for that particular point. So, exception is intended to restrain the enacting clause. Marlab, this clause is not applicable to this. That's it. Proviso is to remove those special cases. And saving clause is used to preserve your destruction against certain rights. Now, what is this? Example. Example, let's say A and B contract where A is going to sell goods and B is going to pay 1 lakh. Which are, they made this contract under Sale of Goods Act. Indian Contract Act. Yes. Now what if I tell you these acts are repealed. Repealed means cancelled, gone. So poor A and poor B, they can't sue each other. 
So if these acts go, can I say A and B's rights will also go? No, na. Their rights, they will still get the rights. Yeah. So they have saved them. So what parliament does is, they will put something known as saving clause. I'll show you. So saving clause will say that even if the act gets repealed, it will not affect the rights of the party. See, saving clause. Nothing will affect the rights. So even if this act goes, it will not affect A and B. A and B can still sue each other. Huh. After this act, if new contract is made, they will not get rules as per this. They will not get the rights as per this. But otherwise, you have saved from any destruction. So, exception that this section is not applicable to these cases. Proviso means they are removing some cases. And saving clause means they are saving you from destruction of rights. Then, bacha, explanation. Explanation is nothing but simple words clarification. So this section includes this but excludes this. Yes, this is what we are trying to tell you. This is the meaning of the section and so on. So they will insert explanations in between. So which are here also you will find a lot of explanation. See? Explanation. They will keep inserting like this. So obviously you will use explanation for understanding this particular law. So explanation. Next, schedules. I don't even have to tell you. Schedules in Companies Act, you have Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3 and so on. So if you ever get confused in the Act, you can also apply the schedules in understanding the law. Read the law as a whole. Obviously, don't read it half and then try to interpret it and then get confused. You read it as a whole. Historical settings. Sometimes if you get confused in what is law trying to tell you, you see the background, why the law was made. Yes, and in this case accordingly interpreted. For example, Child Marriage Act was made because they wanted to stop children from getting married. Because what used to happen is small, small girls used to get married. And the moment they attained puberty at the age of 12, 13, they used to get pregnant. And their body is not that strong to conceive a baby and deliver a baby. So many girls used to die and the baby also used to die. So government is like, no, we will not encourage this. So at least they made Child Marriage Act. So Bacha, you will see the background why the law was made. Then consolidating statutes and previous laws. Example, General Clauses Act was made in 1897. But before that, it was made in 1868. It was also made in 1887. And it was also made in 1897. So, Bacha, if you read General Clauses Act 1897. So, now the question is whether only rules of 1897 Act is applicable or all the rules. So, they will write that this Act consolidates General Clauses Act 1868, then General Clauses Act 1897 and General Clauses Act 1887. So, all three they have put. So, this line indicates that okay, all rules are applied. All rules are consolidated together. Then usage, that is what we do in practical life. So, what is reasonable time is not given in Indian Contract Act. You will apply what people do in practical life. So, reasonable time will depend on facts and circumstances of each case, right? For perishable goods, it can be one, two days. For furniture, it may be, can be one, two weeks and so on. So, you will see the practical life usage. Then, earlier, later and analogous acts. Sometimes, bacha, you have one law made in a different century, another law made in another century. But if their object is similar, you will be reading them at the same time together. For example, Indian Penal Code was made in 1860. The object is to suppress crimes. Then Information Technology Act was made in 2000. The object was to suppress cyber crimes. But you will read both the laws together because their particular object is similar. Even though they are made in two different eras, still you will read them together. Then dictionary definitions. 
you will apply dictionary if nothing else works out first you give the preference to your own act definitions not there you follow general clauses act definitions not there then dictionary as a last resort but if you have multiple meanings you choose the most appropriate meaning given in the dictionary and lastly bacha you can apply foreign case laws as well foreign case laws but not of any country only that country which has similar jurisprudence means similar judicial system like of india for example india and uk they have similar judicial system so you can follow uk case laws but you can't follow american case laws or canadian case laws or african case laws because they are very different their judicial system is different but first you give preference to indian law you are confused then you give preference to indian case laws you still confuse then you can give preference to foreign case laws so that is your sixth one so what we saw was interpretation of law that is interpretation of statutes but now a very small thing which are they can ask you this for four marks or five marks what are the rules for interpretation of deeds and documents so if you, let's say you are a practicing chartered accountant and if a client comes to you that this is a partnership deed just see and tell me now whether it is proper or not you can't say out of syllabus so you need to know how to interpret a document first point they are just saying read everything literally in a very simple way you consider the background of the parties you consider the intention of the parties you also consider the surrounding circumstances after that you give meaning to each word and very important bacha the same word will have the same meaning throughout unless you specifically mention something else and the status and training of the parties is to be considered see for example if a normal person is making this deed or document he will write some word in a different context but if a legal expert writes that document he will write that word in a very different context for example property property means in practical life for people property means asset so if a normal human being has drafted that document if he writes property it might mean asset but let's say if a legal expert is drafting it property means ownership in a way right you have done this in sale of goods act so whenever he writes property here the meaning will be ownership and not asset so you'll have to see that plus if there is any contradiction between two parts of the same document or two clauses of the same document you have to give preference to that law which has come earlier in time but in case of your harmonious construction you used to give preference to that law which has come later in time but when it comes to document you have to give preference to that part which has come earlier in time so this was your interpretation of deeds and documents now a very small thing which i want to tell you that is document what exactly do you mean by document it is nothing but a paper or any material which gives you information and it can be used as evidence but law does not like anything which is so simple so what is this document means any matter expressed or described on any substance by means of letters etc for the purpose of recording that matter now if you read like this it will go bounce so i will just tell you in very simple way bacha documents there are four components first you have matter second you have substance third you have record and fourth you have means matter is what you write substance is on which you write record is by which you write and means is how you write you wrote a b c d words etc this is the matter which you have written on paper paper is a substance you wrote it by pen the pen is the record means means how you wrote it you put symbols you put alphabets you put uh, numbers alphabets digits etc whatever so matter is what you write substance is on which you write record means by which you write and means is how you write so now you will understand the definition 
matter expressed or described on any substance by means of letters, figures, marks, etc. or multiple means for the purpose of recording that matter that is pen. So this is your document. I hope you are very clear bacha. I would still stick by my words. Please do writing practice of at least those 4-5 questions which I have told you it's important. Please keep writing Latin terms. It will improve your spellings and it is definitely going to boost your confidence. Don't worry. Yes, you will be able to write but just ensure whatever I have told you, you follow. Okay? All the very best, Pacha. Bye-bye.